Welcome back to Partners Dog School. We are excited to begin our newest training journey with the puppy Lily, a toy poodle that needs issues addressed at home with both her mom and aunt. I'll be meeting with both of them here shortly. Let's go see what they would like for us to work on with Lily. So going along with just some of the basics, um, obviously we teach that here. I'll kind of give you guys a little insight about our philosophy. We are known as what we're called balanced trainers. So we do believe in telling the dog no. So that's pretty basic. A lot of facilities are either very positive. Back then, training was a little bit more on the compulsive side, you know, using more correction. We balance the two between. Um, so making sure, you know, if I tell her like sit, you know, uh, Lily sit, and if she doesn't give me that sit, and I tell her no, and then she gives me that sit, maybe I'll say something like good girl. Just kind of keep along with that. Because a lot of times with correcting a dog or telling him no, it can shut them down. So you build them back up just to keep that confidence, especially looking at a dog like her, I can tell she's a little bit more on the insecure side, especially around newer people. Um, but basically we like to work on building what is called foundation. So that's just our main six commands that we work on here. We have sit, down, stay, heal, place, and then come, which is our recall. So those are the main six commands that we teach to the dog to build this foundation. So a lot of times foundation in a dog when we work on building it can also help improve other behaviors it might be struggling with, such as barking is a really good example. It kind of teaches them to be a little bit more obedient, basically. Yeah. What is place? Place, so you guys see those beds over there? So it's sending the dog to the bed and having them just stay there, basically. So sending them to a bed and place can be just about anything. It can be this chair. So no matter what you make it, as long as you shape it to the dog, this is place. I send the dog here. I expect them to lay down and just stay there until I give them either a free command, which is break from command, or I might call them to me or do something else with them. Is that gonna make sense? Yeah, yeah place. I love teaching place to dogs. It's so fun. In our training, we shape all the commands with food, motivation, encouragement. We don't hold the dog accountable until they actually know the command, right? So it's mainly just free shaping. You know, we use treats, we use food lure, we capture, um, voice, verbal praise, pet praise. Very encouraging through the training. But like I said, once they start to know it and you start to fade out the food, then there has to be some layer of accountability and that's where if you're being disobedient, then that's where you get the correction and I will push your butt down into a sit. Yep, kind of the biggest, the biggest thing about training too is that we want to use a lot of luring, especially if we're teaching a puppy brand new things they've never learned before. We want to make sure they completely, we absolutely know they know the command. That's when we can start, you know, doing some correcting, um, especially if the dog already knows something and I ask for that dog to sit and the dog doesn't do this. Yet, I'm just like, come on, you already know what a sit is. I've taught you how to sit. You're not doing it. That's when the corrections start to come in. You know, we're not using that food anymore. Um, but typically with the positive reinforcement and using different incentives, I really like to use food and toys. So whatever motivates the dog the most. Um, does she like treats? She loves oh yeah. She like toys. Well, I don't know if you want. She loves to. Okay. Toys. She especially loves this little lamb chop that we found. I love and the I've lamb chops. I bought her balls and other toys, and she'll play with them and runs for lamb chop every time. I love the little lamb chop toys. We have some too. <laughs> All right. This is our first day with Lily. Just having her in a crate for a little bit. Just have her exposed to everything that's going on out here. She seems a little insecure, definitely a lot insecure. She really wants to come out. I've tried putting treats in there to see if she'll take some, but she hasn't really taken any yet. Hey, so. sorry to bother you. So I got a text from Anissa this morning, the overnight staff. Yeah. So I'll read you what the text says. I had let her use the potty in the small yard. When I was going to get her out, we were in the small gated area. I went to pick her up and she started lashing out. She bit me. She bit her? Yeah. You're kidding. Oh my God. So I guess it like wasn't a puncture mark. Okay, so no, no punctures? Yeah, I asked if she was okay. She's fine. But so I'm kind of thinking, you know, there's no relationship. She doesn't have a relationship with the dog, yeah. right? And she probably reached down to go get her to pick her up. She shouldn't have done that. Yeah, maybe it was yeah, like she a pressure used energy the leash thing. And calmly did. Yeah, That's so really weird. I wasn't expecting her to go out and like bite someone. Should we make her a red tag? No, no the bite. yellow's good. They just need yeah. to go with caution. They okay. just need to go with caution. Yeah. Building a relationship is super important. Um, kind of like dating 101. Uh, you would want, you know, to go out for coffee first, or maybe you know, exchange text messages, get to know somebody before you start doing stuff for them or with them. 
Uh, super important with a dog too. You want to build relationship. You don't want the dog just working without knowing you or just working for free. Asking him for stuff that they're not ready or they don't um, have that relationship with you yet. So right now it's important for Emma to just to go and build a relationship with this Hi, dog. Hi, what are you doing? Another thing, since I notice sometimes on the first day, dogs might offer you commands even if you don't ask them for it. I just reward them, be like, yeah. oh, good job, thank you. Yep. Like, I'm not asking you to do anything, but I will take the offers. Yeah, capturing is a huge part in dog, dog training. So I'm going to be talking and training kind of at the same time. Um, so here we go. So first, Lily. I like how she's engaged with me. Good, that was very nice. She's offering a sit, respecting my space. Very good. Lily, come. Yes, good job. Nice. Good job, Lily. Good. Now see how she pops her back up? She pops back up into a little sit. So I'm gonna try to fix that for her. There we go. With duration. Duration is how long they can hold the position. Yes. So the first couple of things I really noticed with her is that maybe a little bit, she was a little bit insecure. Definitely noticed she was just a little, just very wary, wary of her surroundings, just kind of uncomfortable. First couple of days she was, you could definitely see a lot of that insecurity and so worked on a lot on just building up her confidence a little bit, which her confidence peaked pretty quickly. One thing I noticed during week one when we were working with her, she's a little bit weird about body pressure. Anytime we have asked her for a sit or a down, a lot of times we have her working at heel, she'll kind of of just sit or down and position herself a little bit further away and so that can be a pretty common thing for dogs to be a little bit uncomfortable about body pressure because again she is a tiny little dog and I am a 5'8 person so I'm definitely towering over her so that was just one thing is just getting her used to like hey body pressure isn't a bad thing We're just working close together and that seeming point of heel is you know work a little bit closer to me so I don't have to reach super far away to grab you or have you come closer to me.